every once in a while, I get to sit down with somebody that I've admired for years. So we have daytime legend Jennifer Bassey here. Stay tuned. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. I play, I went with the old school theme. <laughs> Not, with the, not the 90s or 2000s. I went to the original where I grew up listening, hearing this in the background, my parents watching this. All my children, you guys. That's right. Hi, you guys. Welcome to this special edition of Jade Spotlight. I am James Lodge, your host. You know who I am. And I have some, I was going to cut, just going to cut to the chase. I got all the time I can to talk to her. I got a daytime legend. Now, she's done many things. But many of you who are tuning in right now are watching for two reasons and are about to watch for three. She played Marion Colby on All My Children, off and on for years. She came on as Quinn Danvers on General Hospital recently, and who knows, she might be back. And she's in a new series, well, the series is not new, she's, she's a new addition to this series, and Acosta, it's in its fifth season coming out, January, was it December 26th, and she plays a role in that too, ladies and gentlemen, there you one in between, Jennifer Bassey. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Welcome, and thanks for having me on. Yes, so it's a pleasure to have you on here. And so Anna Costa is a series that, I'm, I'm going to show you guys a trailer of it. It's a quick trailer of it, and you'll see here in the trailer. It's been on for four seasons already. It's Emmy winning, and this show is so good. Let's show the trailer for this new season. Julian's ring. Okay. And Acacia is set in Washington, D.C. And you are you are joining this, you joined this cast. You know, you know, and how I got here, how I got into the cast, I got a call from a man who said, Robin Strasser. Uh, <laughs> Another legend. The Another fabulous legend. Robin Strasser, yes. who is fabulous and wonderful, yes. uh, recommended you for a part on our show. And I said, well, tell me more about it. I, I want to talk to you. And so they said, well, it's called Anacostia. We've been on since 2000, I think, nine. Yeah, been on for a while. And he didn't tell me that Anthony Anderson directs, writes, produces, right. edits, and stars in it. Amazing. I just thought Anthony was the writer. <laughs> yeah, now, yes. all I can tell you is that when, when we started talking and, and when the script arrived, I went, oh, my God, this is a fabulous mm -hmm. script this yeah. guy is a brilliant writer yeah so i mean we had an amazing time it's an amazing group of people and it's really cutting yeah. edge and and i think what they do he they said the producer said jennifer what do you like to do really well i said well i do dead baby at the grave really well <laughs> yeah. now what i mean to the yes. listeners dead baby on the grave means you don't really have a dead baby at the grave right. but you can play dead baby at the grave mm -hmm. which means you have deep deep pain and deep deep crying mm -hmm. and blah 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 you know and so i do dead baby at the grave really really well mm -hmm. so uh, so they researched some of my stuff and there they you went, go because you do it you could do it all you could so, do comedy drama and everything yes well, well comedy i love i mean i know you do. you're I good love, at it but i mean you could do drama I love too comedy but i so, but, but anger and deep pain are my oh, yeah. two, you know. So anyway, this whole character is based on revenge full of deep pain. Mm. And oh, man, she is heavy duty. It's going to be heavy duty. <laughs> Isn't it great, again, in this time of your career to get a good script? Oh, at any time in your career. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. It's like, to get a really good yeah. script. I'm talking... Our scripts are really good. I'm, yeah. I'm not knocking any right. writers from anything. Right, no, right. But Anthony's script is... It, way, way above a normal script. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just so wonderfully written. Mm -hmm. and, and you can just play it, you know. It just gets into your bloodstream, and it's like, you know, and he gave me only one note. He said, just go with it. Go for it. Go yeah. with it. You know, so I did. And, and it was all there. He said, I just want you to get really, really angry to the point of yelling at this one point. And, and, I and it came out like... I don't even remember what I did. It, it just kind wow. of just went boom. And everybody... It just, it, it was a great experience. I'm really enjoying so you it. Were, so you were really, you were so present 
in the acting, it started coming out, the stuff started coming out of you, didn't it? Well, I always tell people, they say, well, uh, you, you know, people, uh, even at, at, at General Hospital, say, well, you really know your lines really well. I said, if I don't know my lines really well, I cannot get into the mm. gut of this character or this role. Mm -hmm. For instance, I just had a scene as Quinn uh, where uh, she'd been lied to. Oh, yeah, yes. And... Yes, I remember that scene. It could yes. jeopardize her job. Yes, I remember and that so scene. And so I went into some pain in a speech I had. I kind of was almost not teary, but but I was really upset uh, that this could, I could be fired. Yes. I mean, I'm a CEO. I mean, I'm way up there. Right, I'm not right. a CEO, but I'm a top yeah, of yeah. what I do. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I felt very threatened by these lies and yeah. harmed and damaged. Well, and also with the way they played, because the scenes have air, the way they played it was like, oh, it's no big deal. We'll figure it out. And you're like, excuse me. No, 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 this no. This is no. for real. This yeah. is like real life. That's how, that's how you, you, you present your character. Like, this is real life. You guys are just playing off like, well, yeah, we lied, and so-and-so is not really manly. And I was like, you're like, wait a minute, this is not, this is not funny. Exactly. You're like, this is not funny at all. Exactly. And you, you, so, play, you played that very well. You, you, you played that very well. Oh, I loved it. I loved the whole group. The whole group. Yeah. Whole group. I mean, all the ones that I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Well, I knew Rebecca Budig. Oh, yes. We who I her. loved dearly. Oh, my God. And I knew Fanola for years. We were in the same oh, acting yes. class, and then she was on All My Children. Yes, she was, yes. And uh, I got to say, I'm a big, I mean, I love Michelle Stafford. I never met her. My girl, my, and, my and friend. And I tease her. I, I say, <laughs> Michelle, it's, it's a shame you don't have a great figure. You should really go to the gym and work out. <laughs> honey, you need to do some weights She's and so stuff. She's so hot. I mean, honey. Honey. Oh, she's so. They, they put in these dresses. I mean, like. I mean, she. I have a friend named Melanie Martin. She. Yeah. She. I, I, she's a ten, and and Michelle is a ten. Oh, easily. Okay. So we did the red carpet in Milan. Uh, Melanie and I did a movie together, and it, it was nominated for best short film in okay. the Milan Film Festival. They said, "What were you wearing?" on the red carpet. I said, well, I was with Melanie, so I could have been having sex with a donkey on the red carpet, and nobody would have noticed me because she was there, yeah, you know? Right. And it's the same as Michelle. Michelle yeah. walks into the room, and you go, oh, this is not fair. And you're so, it's so funny, again, somebody... And yeah. she's wonderful. No, no, I was going to say, she's actually a friend of mine now because she came on my show two years ago, this show, and she came in and just like, first of all, she's hot. I've admired her for oh, years. Oh, she's incredible. But super nice and real. Yeah. And she's been on our show like five times since, and we've talked off camera. And so like she's, well, she's most one of the most real people you're gonna meet yep. out there. Yep. And, and super funny. sweet and funny. And just, but, but when they put on these dresses on these shows, I'm like, well, she okay, can wear anything. She, she can, can wear anything. Any, she can wear anything. Anything. Honey. Anything. Honey. anything. Yeah. Anything. So it's funny you say that. But I love me. I love you, Michelle. You know I love you. Um, <laughs> there are people watching um, the show right now. Candice Mack says, um, "Oh, and it cost you the series." Rodelli says, "Love Mary and all my children." We're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about all my children. We're gonna talk about Quinn. We're gonna talk about all that. But I first want to talk about Anacostia because the series has been on for so long. What is the character's name you're playing? I'm playing Beverly Newman. Okay. And uh, this is a uh, this is she has been very damaged and very harmed yeah. Yeah. by Elizabeth Hubbard's character. Okay, you guys. We talk Lucinda from Astral Turns. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Lucinda, right. I love Elizabeth yeah. Hubbard and, and the doctors, and she's yeah. an Emmy winner. Also. I mean, I love, yeah. I love her. I love so, her. So anyway, so they all come to to see me, the group on Anacostia, yeah. to find somebody who's missing, and and they asked me if I could know of a place because I was Elizabeth's character's name is Eva. I was Eva's husband's mistress for many, many years. Okay. So, uh, and she killed him. It's a long story. Yeah, long anyway, story, guys, you know. It's soap opera. So, <laughs> so, you know, so anyway, what they do is they open a real kettle of worms for this character because yeah. suddenly the rage, she gets in touch with her rage. Wow. And uh, it's going to be major revenge. As an actress, what was that like for you to go deep into that? Oh, fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure you're like, it was a great, I had a great time. You're like, I had a good time. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, oh, you said, you said Martha Burns on this series, too. Yep. From she Rotors. won an Emmy last year on this series. That's right. I love, I love her, too. Um, so, I mean, to go deep, like, like I said, you could do comedy and drama. So doing the, the drama part, was it hard to shake off afterwards after you start doing scenes? Or was it for you, it was like no. you, just, you could turn it on, turn no, it off? No, it's like another person, and then mm. it's done, you know? Yeah. Uh, sometimes I, I'm still a little teary if I have a really emotional thing, yeah. but then it goes away. Do you have to like your characters when you play? Yeah, it's like I'm doing a nightclub act right now as well, which I have not opened yet. Yeah. But it, yeah, I talked to a very famous nightclub performer who passed away uh, uh, recently, and she said, um, I said, what do you need to do 
uh, when you do a club action, she said you, two things. They have to hear every single word, and you have to be passionately in love with everything you're singing. Wow. And it's the same thing. I mean, you can get cast in a character that you love, but the character may do something that you're not yeah. agreeing with. Right, right. You know, I mean, all my children, I had a, 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 a terrible time at one point. I said, Marion, even Marion wouldn't do this. <laughs> you know, and they said, no, <laughs> we wrote it. And I said, I know you wrote it, but <laughs> I'm going to be. I mean, I had people literally, when I first started, and all my children, I had tomatoes thrown at me in the street. Oh I had a woman hit me in the face and call me an adulterous bitch in, in a supermarket. Oh, oh, my God. And I said, no, no, I, I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm married to someone oh. else, and we're very happy. <laughs> you know. I mean, I'm not really doing this. But when you're a really bad villain, yeah. they hate you. And so I, I lightened her up. I decided to lighten. Well, yeah, because what's the, the whole journey of Marion? Yeah, you went through a lot of different incarnations on that show. Oh well, well uh, I, yeah. but I based it on Harold Pinter. Uh, this oh. I have a whole thing. I said, you know, everyone's doing comedy, and my character's lethally horrible. You know, right. someone's going to kill me. You know, <laughs> yes. so I've got to make her funny. So Harold Pinter, I was I did a Broadway show in 1969. Wow. I stood by in the Royal Shakespeare and I played in it in the Homecoming. Harold okay. Pinter's oh, Homecoming. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. And he writes these sexual pauses, uh. and and everything that he writes is very sexual. And since Marion was you know a nymphomaniac, yes. um, <laughs> like like the character would say in the play, she would say, um, it's English. She would say, don't be too sure though. Look at me, I move my leg. <laughs> That's all it is, it's a leg. Moving, but I wear underwear, which moves with me, it captures your attention. You know, well, so, I love I, that. so I thought, okay, if I have a line with a man 70 years or younger on All My Children, I'm going to take the line and sexually pause at a provocative moment to make it filthy. Uh, so if my line was, would you like a bite of my hamburger? I'd go, darling, would you like a bite of my uh, hamburger? Why did you just, you just did Mary? Oh, my God, this is crazy. Then, you just then, did Mary just now. Oh, my God. And, and so that's ways. how that evolved. I yeah. was only supposed to be on three months. That's it? And I was on for nine, uh, for 30 years on and off. Yeah, I know. Off and on, yeah, yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. Wait, yeah. so three, three well, months? What was like the first, like, I mean... You came off just to bother Liza and... Well, I came on to sleep with Tad. Yeah, Tad and, Cad. And she said, well... Uh, and I was in my early... <laughs> then. <laughs> and, 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 uh, <laughs> and... And um, and the producer said, well, you're going to have to sleep with a 19-year-old. And I said, well, if he can handle it, I can handle it. Okay, that's right, kids. <laughs> that is right. But, but, wait a minute, all seriousness, though... You weren't that old back then, I don't think. Not really. Oh, darling, darling. I've had two very good facelifts. <laughs> and I'm thinking about having a third. I'm thinking about a third before I leave the planet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because no, I thought, because I, 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 you know, because sometimes, sometimes they play with age on soaps. And you'll see a soap of uh, mother there and daughter. Is, there's nothing graceful about aging. <laughs> I don't care what anyone says. They are wrong. Dead effing wrong. Pardon my language. Uh, no, no. Nothing graceful about aging, baby. And if you can stop it, do it. That's all I can tell. <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> I love it. Okay, I love that. But well, we're going to go right into all my children clip on the show. And this is you, this is after you slept with Tad. You and Michael E. Knight having a moment. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's right. Put all the blame on me. I should have known that you wouldn't be man enough to own up to your part. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait a minute. Just because you're stupid enough to leave the chain around where your daughter can find it doesn't make me the guilty party here. I don't know how I, I, don't know how I got involved in this mess. I mean, why couldn't you have been honest with me from the start, Tad? Wait a minute. You made the pass at me. No, wait a minute. <laughs> You made the first pass at me, and oh. I never, ever, ever would have got involved with you if I'd known you were involved with my own daughter. Oh, is that so? From what I understand, you took a few risks before I have arrived on the scene. Yeah, well, obviously, those risks didn't teach me very much, did they? Not only have I done this to Larry, but I've managed to hurt my own daughter as well. Come on, Marion. Mine's is a lot stronger than that. Oh, yes, man. You think whatever you need to think to deal with your own sin. was good, the girl. Thank you, honey. She's my daughter, and I know her, and I am frightened. At what she might do. So I just want to show that scene. This is from that's from the '80s, um, the first tight go around, and you'd already slept with with Liza. She was threatening to tell, and it was a whole big thing. I mean, working with Michael E. Knight. I mean, he's a talking about another daytime legend. But you heard you had him in the er, you had him. <laughs> Your character had him. <laughs> I had him. My character had um, him yeah. in the earlier years. Um, I mean, so I mean, so I mean, that, I mean, what was it like working with him then? 
Oh, Michael, he's an angel. Yeah. He's an angel. Very, very funny. And and he doesn't know how he, he says, I'm not really good looking. I said, Michael, have you looked in the mirror? I mean, you know, he's very hard on himself. Mm. He doesn't know how handsome he is and how talented he is, yeah. you know. He's a natural. Yeah, he's and, natural. And he's got a wonderful comedy uh, timing. Yes. So we would choreograph our sex scenes. So we've had the best time. Oh, I'm sure. You know, I said, I'm going to put my purse over here so you have to climb on top of me to get your purse. <laughs> I mean, I was like, I mean, we really, really choreographed everything. Oh, no, I loved your scene. I remember whole, I, loved, I was Honey, watching it, so I loved it. We had, Carol Burnett said, of all, like they asked her what was her favorite store, and I'm all, she said, Mary and Tad and Liza. Yeah. You know. It that was, was a popular storyline. That and, was a real big storyline. It was line. beautifully written. Yeah. Our writers nailed it. Yeah. They nailed they did. it. Oh, I'll yeah. say Marcy Walker, another person who. Marcy we... Walker, brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. I agree. You don't even see her working. It's like she's really doing it, like it's really happening to her. I agree. She is an amazing woman, amazing yeah. to work with, just amazing. You did, and then you say that, you did work with two people who are natural. They were both natural at this. It's so young, and they were natural at it. That's right. That's right. I mean, because I love Marcy Walker when she was when she went to Santa Barbara and other things she's done, but she she is like a natural actress. She like inhabits the character, and Michael E. Knight is Tad. I mean, he's Tad. Yeah, you know, certain actors you can kind you can't really see them working, but there are certain actors where it's so real that you know it's like they are this person, and that's Marcy. Marcy was really, I think, the best actress on the show by yeah. far. I think this is good. So in the chat, people like some people are watching. Um, Somebody said it's a brilliant role that you're doing Anacostia. Uh, Benjamin Bryan says, your screen presence is amazing. It was obvious on AMC and GH. I can tell you she's going to be epic on Anacostia. December 26th can't come fast enough. And uh, and Rodelli says, yes, AMC memories. I mean, people are just like, they're just they're just raving about you. It's like, it's, you oh, just, thank I mean, you. Thank you. Those things. Um, now, also, with you worked with the wonderful, super talented, may you rest in peace, David Canary. Oh, your oh. stuff with Stuart. Again, talk about, again, talk about your whole transformation, or well, let's say your evolution on the show. Yeah. When it got you involved with him, who would have thought Marion and Stuart? Yeah, well, for our head writer, Megan McTavish, at that point, uh, did something that nobody had done on daytime. She put a love story with two older people, really mm -hmm. older people. Yes, yes. Um, and we won most favorite couple of the year. No one ever over 40 had ever won. Uh, you know, she wrote, they wrote an amazing story. I agree. Now, David is one of the greatest actors. How did he do it? I mean, of he, all time. I mean, he was Adam, yeah. who was completely one side, and Stuart. Well, when I met, when I, when I was working with David, I said, David, he said, Jennifer, be happy that you're married to Stuart because Adam got the brains, but Stuart got the goods. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And Marianne like was that. very happy about okay. that. Okay, she, like, she was very happy with that. Uh, I like that. I like David, that. David was, uh, uh, and still is, because you yeah. can't erase what he did. Nope, you can't. Um, was just a truly great actor. Yeah. He was a great actor. I mean, from what, but Bonanza before that? He was, he's around for, he was around for years. He's just great. He, he was also a singer. Yeah. Uh, and a great dad. Yeah. And, and just an overall... Wonderful man. I mean, yeah. if you were new on the show, he would introduce himself. He'd be, you know, I mean, he, he just couldn't have been a nicer man. He yeah. was more like Stuart, not How dim, funny. not dim like right, Stuart, right, right. but he was very right with you and very loving yeah. and charming and yeah. down to earth. None of yeah. that, no Adam at all, no edge. Yeah. Yeah. David in real life had no edge. He was just a very gentle funny. soul, a very good soul. But isn't that funny how that usually works? People who play bitches yeah. or, like when I interviewed somebody, I talked to Linda Gray about Larry Hagman. And she's like, he's one of the, apparently he's notoriously one of the nicest people ever, but he played JR. Yeah. JR is known for being this guy who would unscrupulously horrible. horrible. Horrible, yeah. But in real life, apparently he's one of the nicest people mm -hmm. on earth. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really funny you meet people Speaking of off camera, talking about Susan Lucci. But how, everybody I talk oh, to is better. Like, she, yeah, her's yeah. like one of the nicest people again. Yeah, Susan no nice is adorable. They're, you know, she is a sweetheart, very funny, very charming, very well mannered. Uh, she's a love. She really is. Mm -hmm. And that's a myth. Everyone thinks, is she, everyone says the same thing. Well, how difficult is she? I said, she's not difficult. Yeah. She's very, she just does the job and goes home. I mean, you know, it's mm -hmm. like everybody else. 
Uh, mm -hmm. She's a wonderful woman, and she's just was a joy to work with. Yeah. And we would laugh. And I, you know, that's the thing about her. I actually have never heard. I've heard people ask that question. She was like a bitch in real life, but I never heard anything bad on the sets. I, mean, I never heard anything bad. I mean, I listen to all the soap stuff. I've never heard anything bad about her in terms of work. Well, I've got to tell you, no, I'm kidding. Not, you're like for real. It's, like, it's, like, it's just us, Jennifer. It's just us sitting here. I'm kidding. Yes. I'm kidding. No, there's nothing. I mean, you know, there's yeah. She's really a charming. Yeah. Very delightful woman. Now, before we go on to like Jenna Osmond, the later soaps, but because you were part of the some of the early years of some of these soaps and worked with people like Fran Heflin and um, and Ruth Warwick on the show, Eileen Hurley, and Eileen Hurley, and and James Mitchell. I mean, and you were about, there. What about and also with Dorothy Lyman? Dorothy Lyman. Oh, yeah. Dorothy Lyman. Oh my God, so good. She was fabulous. Oh my God. So you were just. I mean, you were on the same show as some of these people who. I mean, these were the the pioneers of the of the soap genre. Right. I mean, right. yeah, and and back then, but back then you had different. It was different. The pacing was different back then, wasn't it? Than it is like now. Back then, wouldn't you have more time to rehearse and more time to like? Oh, oh, you. But were, nowadays, you have to like just kind of. No, do you were it, there right? all day. Yeah. I mean, you had to be there. All, and they did it in sequence, and now you just have. If you have five scenes, you come in and do all five, and you're gone. Wow. But you gotta, you gotta nail them. You gotta wow. nail them. And how was Anacostia? How was their filming? Because it's a little they different. They right? have one camera. Oh wow. So what they do is they do uh, they did our big wide shot at the end, which okay. of course I thought was really good because all the gestures, you know, would have been the okay. same. Uh, and then I asked him because of my age <laughs> and because I didn't sleep very well the night before because uh, I was in Washington. Um, I said, um, you know, can you do my close ups first? You know. Oh, how funny. Okay. And so we did my first, and then we did Sasha. She plays Dominique. Yeah. Delightful. Everybody was delightful. Yeah. We did hers, and then we did the men, and then we did the room, and you know the whole thing. But they have one camera, so it's a, so it's a longer day. So it was a, it's a whole day. Okay. Whole day. Okay. First of all, somebody out there, yes, I wear an all my children T-shirt from the '90s. I was showing it to her after. Somebody said they love my shirt. Yes, I, I will post it online so you guys can see what it looks like and who and who's in it. And she's not in it. No, I know. They didn't put her in there. No, that's when I was in the insane asylum. Oh, yes, you were. Yes, you were. <laughs> they didn't let me out of the insane asylum at that point. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, I'm going to ask you. So when they, when they would call you to come back on the show, what did that feel like for you? Was it like... Oh, here you go. Or I was like, I mean, did you just very happy to get called back? I mean, well, it's like putting on a, 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 your favorite old coat. Yeah. You know, it's like you all know each other. Yeah. Okay, you yeah. all have, you're in the same Pine Valley together. Yeah. And uh, you, you know what to expect. Yeah. You know, so, That's true. so it's like going home and working with old friends. Yeah, that makes sense. That's, That's what totally, it's like. Yeah, that makes, that makes sense. You're like, it's I very, know this role. It's so. very comfortable. That makes sense. It's very comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. How did you feel when it got to canceled? When, could, when that and Watch Live both got canceled well, at the same time. I can't talk about the head of daytime at that point, but... Yes. Uh, <clears> you, know, you can if you want to. Nothing yeah, finished, yeah, I just feel... I think they made a big mistake. I really do. I agree. I think the shows that have come on after us... Now, I'm not sure about this... But I think they have not been successful. Yeah, somehow, just a just chew, I think. It's the only one. But there were other ones that didn't, they didn't last. They didn't make it. And, and, you know, there are still people who want to see. They do. So, Marlboro. They do. You know. The four, they're holding on. Those four are holding on. They are. But people still tell me, uh, where are all these actors? I know. The ones that are, you know, guiding know. light as the world turns. You yeah. guys. Like, where are you guys? Yeah. They want to see it. They want, I mean, we know you guys are doing other things, but they want to see you guys on other soaps. Yeah. So that's 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 a, that's a tough thing for people out there because they they didn't they didn't want them that way. Um, so then you went on to General Hospital. So I want to show you a scene from that. We're on the same page, right? If she asks about your backstory, you don't answer. I know. And the reason is to preserve the mystique. And if she pesters you about why I'm the one doing most of the talking, it's because I mean, you both. I love them. I love them both. And if she, right. Amy, Amy, it's gonna be okay. It's just one meet and greet, and you'll never have to worry about this again. All right. So take a deep breath. I don't know. Let's go do this. That's Quinn Danvers. Uh huh. And you must be a uh, team, Ask Man Landers. <laughs> Come in. Thank you for meeting me in my hotel room. I had some business to take care of in Toronto, so. Um, I was in the neighborhood, so to speak. <laughs> That's fine. We'd much prefer to meet in our neck of the woods instead of the hustle of Manhattan. Well, uh, you, you must be the voice behind 
Ask Mount Landers. And you are? Amy Driscoll, his manager. Ah, oh, oh, so you're the genius who swooped him up before the publishing world could get their hands on him, huh? <laughs> Very so let's watch a little bit of that because what's funny is, I've interviewed, as you guys know, I've interviewed both of them. Great people. Ryan Pavey's great. Risa Dorkin's great. When you open the door, uh, fans like myself were like, ah. <sighs> We Thank know you. her. I mean, seriously, it was, again, it was about comfort food, so to speak. It was like, oh, okay. We know it's going to be good. It was almost like, we know it's going to be good. Like, oh, we know her. She's you. good. It was like, everyone had it. Because we had heard you were going to be on the show. We had not heard you were coming. They made the announcement. You know, the announcements on sub Twitter and everything. But literally, when you opened the door, we all kind of went, ah. Oh, <laughs> there she is. There she is. Thank you. So how did you, so, because you didn't work with um, Frank Vontee before. No, no, no. Yeah. no. I, well, first of all, they didn't know this. I didn't tell, and you're, this is the first time I'm telling people. Okay, tell it, okay, tell it. Okay, hot off the press. Yes. Uh, when I got the call to do General Hospital, I was having stomach surgery. Oh, my God. From uh, old scar tissue around uh, the uh, intestines, from appendix thing. Anyway, you can have, it's a nightmare, let me tell you. Wow. So I'm, I'm, I'm having, I'm waking, I'm waking up from surgery, <laughs> and I get this call saying, General Hospital wants you to come. And they're not sure of the dates. <laughs> and I said, well, well uh, she said it could be the end of the month and it could be the middle of the month. And now it was the beginning of May. Okay. And so I thought, I asked my surgeon, I said, well, I really want to do this job. He said, you'll be able to do it. And I said, you sure? He said, yeah. So I said, okay. But what they didn't know is when I arrived, I had just got the, the stuff out, and I was oh. being very careful with walking, and, you know, still, I wasn't oh, feeling yeah. great, you know. But it never showed. I was very grateful, and yeah. I just, you know, did it. But I was in the middle of surgery at that time. I mean, oh can you believe it? Talk about professional. Yeah. <laughs> See, you're like, I want, you, I want this job. Um, especially. So, I mean, so they, so they literally came to you. Did he write this role for you, or did you have to audition? I mean, what was, what uh, was the deal? Our head writer at that time, and, and, and I know her very well. Why is her name Elizabeth? Jean Passanati. 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 That's right, Jean Passanati. Yeah. Uh, Who's I retired, think, you guys. Recom is. recommended me to Frank. Oh, okay. And I think they talked, and they just called and said, we're going to offer it to you. And, uh, but is that nice to get roles that are oh. kind of, I mean, it's having an audition. You've auditioned yeah. your whole life. You know how that it's is. It's just like Robin recommending me for Anna Costa. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's like, yeah, it's right. great. Yeah. It's, it's great. Nice. It's kind of nice. And so what was different about that set than All My Children for you? No, say that again. What was different working on that set as opposed General to... General Hospital? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are they similar in many ways? Very similar. Very similar. Yeah, very, very similar. Uh, it's the same format. At the end of All My Children, we were all taking all the scenes you were oh, in and right. filming them. Right. So it was right. very similar. Yeah. yeah. I heard Frank is a very hands-on producer. First of all, he's very good looking. Well, he's, he's tall, good looking. Yes, he is. <laughs> he is he's a tall. very good looking man. Yes, he is. I was surprised how young and good looking. I've never met him. <laughs> oh, you never, never seen like him? Like oh, him. okay. Oh, my God, he's really good looking. Um, <laughs> and I complimented him on, 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 high, on bringing <laughs> Michelle on, on the show. Oh, yeah. He said, I, I, he said, I brought her on. I said, I know. I'm, what, you have good taste. Because uh, I'm a, I, I didn't know her before. I'm just a big fan of hers. Yeah. Um, so, no, no. I, so, I didn't know anybody really. Uh, and uh, Risa. And so Ryan, nice. they're both adorable. They're both, yes, they are. Adorable. Yeah, they are. And uh, the whole crew. My friend Francesca James, who used oh, to yeah. produce, you know, my children uh, and Gemma Hospital yes. many years ago. Yeah, years ago yeah. She said you're going to be working with the nicest group of people on daytime yeah, television, starting nice. with hair and makeup yes. and the, the the assistant directors and all PR the camera and all. people. Super nice. Everybody has been super nice. Oh, good. Super nice. Good. I mean, beyond nice. Yeah. And the casting department, Mark, I worked with him Mark before. Mark Tessner, my buddy. He is the best. He is. No, he, he, he is deserves the best. having, he has like, what, 10, Every 12 award, innings. He gets, yes, it yeah. completely deserved. He yes. is one of the nicest people on the oh, planet. I, I think so. On, on yeah. the planet, yes, I agree And he's with you got a that. great sense of humor. Yes. yes. And he's got a good eye when he cast me, you know, what I mean. <laughs> Actually, he cast me. He cast me in a wonderful movie, which has never been released. It's oh. now it's called Until We Meet Again. Okay. And um, it's the best audition I ever gave in my entire life. Wow. And he jumped up and screamed. That was more brilliant. Screaming. I mean, it was like. I mean, I thought if I don't get this job, I'm quitting the business. Oh, yeah, right, exactly. If he says I'm back, but, good, I'm good. But again, it. it was deep pain. It was. It was wow. the thing about um, a woman comes to this house. It, that I'm living in, it's not. That's not in the film. Okay. And said, "I'm living in a house you lived in 40 years ago, where your where your fiance died. 
where he was shot and killed. And uh, he is a ghost there, and he wants to talk to you before he has to move on. He's been told he has to oh, move wow. on. And so I go, and, and I arrive, and of course, he's not there. Oh. And I think, she's a charlatan, I'm leaving, and as I put my hand on the door, he appears on the wall, and he's there. And we have a love scene between a 30-year-old ghost and an old woman 40 years later. Wow. It's a wonderful, anyway, he cast me in that. Sounds beautiful. I loved it. I loved it. Wow. Yeah, I'll give you, so you guys out there, if you guys know the story with GH and this, this show, when I met Mark Tester in an interview here at After Buzz, I co-interviewed with somebody else. He was so nice after the interview. He said, here's my card. I know you're starting a show at After Buzz. Yeah. Text me or call me if you need anything. People say, you know, we're in Hollywood. People say it all the time. You're like, whatever. So six months later, it's about the beginning of my show. It's about to start. I'm, I'm producing it. You know, I did all this. All things is me. I text on a text saying, you know, I want to get some guests on the show. I <laughs> S.U. not. I'm going to try to cuss. I S.U. not. Five minutes later, he had sent an email. I mean, this is, I mean he's a busy guy. Yeah. Sent an email to the PR department. At the time, it was Robert Patterson Roy. And said, this is James Hodge, you my buddy. He has a new show at After Buzz on General Hospital. You want to work with him. Exactly. And literally, she worked, I mean, he got, that's how I got all these guests. I mean, she, it was like, but like five minutes later, I know he's a busy guy. Exactly. But he was like, he, well, you know, in this business, all you have is your word. His word is good for me. Yeah. And whenever I've called him for anything, which is not very often when I did, he's right there. I had him on the show. I interviewed him on the show. I said, can you come on the show? People want to know how I get. He came on the show, and we had a great time, and yeah. everybody fell in love with him. Oh, how could you not? He loves actors. That's what I think that's what I think is the best part of it. He loves the business. Yeah. The yeah. shows in his presence. Absolutely. And he treats actors beautifully. Yeah. 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 So that's kinda of, that's, that's a very cool story. That movie sounds great though. Yeah. So well, why isn't it released? I What's don't know. On? I don't know. That happens in Hollywood too all the time. That's Hello. Totally that totally happens. <laughs> um so you know, okay, so here's the thing I have to bring up for you because it's kind of funny because I don't know what you've heard out there, because you're you're pretty much online a lot. The Manlander story is very controversial. Some people, because some people don't like the storyline, others do like. And by people like the people involved in it. They either hate it or they like yes. it. Yes. Yeah. And so, which you've been through that before, obviously. You just have tomatoes being thrown at you and stuff. Um, have you heard anything about the state of the storyline, or, or mostly has it been just positive that you've been on the show and you were there? Tell me that again. Was most of the reaction positive for you being on the show? I, that, well, all I've heard. I mean, yeah, if good. there's negatives, they don't tell me. <laughs> yeah, good. Thank you. Thank good. you for not telling no me. No tomatoes being thrown at her. <laughs> no hit in the face. Oh, my I, God. I, I still can't believe that. I, I keep forgetting that before Stuck social media. in the media. face, darling. Adulterous so. bitch. Bang. God. I went, oh, I don't even like him. No. <laughs> 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 kidding, kidding. <laughs> she, she couldn't even joke like that back then. would be like, oh, uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Um, yeah, so, but I think it's just, I think it's just, you know, you're great. So we might see Dan, may, I mean, uh, Quinn on there someday, maybe again? I hope so. I hope it's, so too. it's open-ended. Yeah, they kind of left it open. They kind of left it open. It's open, so I'm assuming. Who knows? The book was a big seller, because, even after the whole story. It was a big seller. Um, people in daytime genre soap world are always helping each other out, which is a blessing. That's what Candace Mack says. Yes. People, yeah, people in the soap, there's a lot of nice people in, our, in this industry of soap. And digital series now, too. Mm -hmm. Because Anacostia's digital series. That, and, and you can attest to that, right? There's a lot of people that are really nice in this business. Yeah. There are. There are a lot of people. People are playing roles, you guys. These are roles on TV. <laughs> They're not like, many of them are not like that in real life. You got to be able to separate the two. Well, but the problem is that it's, it's five days a week. Yes. So I would get fan mail. I'm not kidding you. That said, do you know that you are sleeping with a murderer? Wow. And do you know who he murdered? <laughs> and I'd go, well, I read the script. You know, I, I, yeah, so I know I'm sleeping with a murderer. Uh, and do they think that we have cameras hidden behind our drapes and that we don't know they're being filmed? I mean, it was, I would get scary mail. Wow. No, really, it scared me. I thought, ew, wow. You know? oh, oh, my God. Oh my God. Like, I'm just talking because this is, this, again, this is, this is pre-internet. And that was the thing. You wrote letters. You wrote letters, and you, they saw you on magazine covers and soap opera digest in the in the in the, uh, in the grocery store, and that's what they saw. Right, right. Now, do you like social media? Oh, sure. Yeah, I say I because I know you're on it. I'm on it, and I've got my. I have a very dear friend named Anya, who uh, she kind of runs everything for me. She's like yep. a genius, a very young genius. Yeah. If I have any problem, I call her. It's okay. fixed in one second, and she does this, and yeah. then yeah. take your phone, take your computer, do that, do this, you know. And so, yeah, I'm very into that. Yeah. Very into yeah, it. Right, yeah, that's right. That's very good. Um, now, I heard some kind of rumor. 
Yeah, I hope so. I, <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's true. <laughs> I've never had the reaction for it. I like that. No, no, I know. I knew it was going to like you. I like. I like that. It's, it's nothing bad, of course. Um, but because we, you know, Hugh Hefner died recently. Oh yeah. So were you a Playboy Bunny? Yeah. So you were. I was one of the first forty. Wow. So what in was the, that experience in like? In the very then? first club. Oh my goodness! I mean, I was—we were pioneers. We were. We, we were bunny pioneers. It's, but no, like my grandparents had were members of the Playboy Club, and they used to talk about going as a couple to see show and, and just and have drinks and like. Well, that's after it expanded to yeah. we, Pittsburgh. Yes, yeah, probably. We're yeah. talking. We started in Chicago. That was wow. it. The only one. It was wow. the only one. Yeah. What was that like? Well, I had to get out of Dodge on another club. This is, I mean, <laughs> uh, I've been writing some a one woman show for a while too, and I've been writing some songs. A woman kidnapped my dog. This what? is true. This is true. What? This is before I went to the Playboy Club. This is getting heavy duty now. Uh, she kidnapped my dog and said, if you don't stop sleeping with my husband, I'm going to kill your dog. Oh, my God. So the reason I ended up at the Playboy Club was because I had to get out of the Gaslight Club because she was after me. But she didn't kidnap my dog, and he made it through. She okay, thank God. Okay, thank God. She didn't kill my dog. Yes. Uh, the husband is another story. Uh, <laughs> but um, I was only 18, guys. Forgive me. Forgive yes, me. you're young. You're yeah, young. Yeah, you're very young. Yes. Um, so then the Playboy Club, yeah, well, we ran, um, Bunny Claudia and I, she left the planet from alcoholism okay. a few years ago, or I loved her dearly. Uh, we ran a room, so we had unknown people and known people. We had Mabel Mercer, Bobby Short. Oh, Bobby Short, yeah. Uh, we had George Burns and Jack Harlan, oh unknown comedy duo. Oh my uh, this is early 60s. Yeah, you know? yeah. So then we had... Um, Oh, one day Victor Lowndes came up. He was oh. the vice president of Playboy. Yeah. And Victor Lowndes said, um, I've met this car wash <laughs> downstairs in our building. I said, yeah. He's funny. I said, yeah. He said, I know it's Sunday night, and I know we don't have acts on Sunday night, but I think we should let him do it. I said, oh, we don't want a car wash here, you know, because we were getting, you know, we'd have the Clancy brothers. Oh, you know, yeah. The, the Clancy brothers were like um, in Irish uh, folk singers. Yeah, yeah. But they were all alcoholics. Oh, so so they'd all come on and they'd have Irish whiskey. They'd go, Give us Irish whiskey. You know, and they'd all drink Irish whiskey. So the third show they'd beat up the audience, which I loved. Oh, I mean, I, love I just love the audience getting beat up. Yeah. So um so he said, Yeah, his name is Dick Gregory. And I said, oh, Well, God. okay. So Dick Gregory came up oh, my goodness. stairs. Okay. And he got on stage. And I didn't even serve, we didn't even serve anybody anything. We were laughing so hard. Wow. And six months later, he was a, a national well, yeah, star. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So we worked with, and Bobby Short said, um, you shouldn't be a singing bunny. You should go study acting. Oh. So I wrote a letter to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. And I said, hi, I'd like to come to your school. And they said, well, we only take three Americans a year. We take 33, 33 British people a year. And so I went over, So I thought, I'm going to audition in England. Well, I got the lowest entrance marks in the history of the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. <laughs> and that was 1960-whatever. So, <laughs> so in, in 2004, I get a call. It goes like this. Darling, it's Richard. I said, who? He said, Richard from RADA. Darling, the centennial's coming up for RADA, <laughs> and you still hold the record for the lowest entrance marks in the history of the school. <laughs> and we want you to fly over, darling, on the big stage and show them why. We want you to do the exact audition that you did. Oh, my goodness. Really. So Joan Collins was there, and John Hurt was there. Oh he was God. in my class, and David Warner, and there's my, all my... And I know all those names. Like, Tony, I know all those names. Like, and like, Tony Hopkins was in my class oh as my well. God. But he hasn't had two face lifts, I have. <laughs> so... Anyway. Well, he's so, hiding now. He's hiding now. <laughs> but he's brilliant. Yeah, he is. But anyway, so I did. I got up and I did. That's the worst audition you've ever seen. So how's, and, so how's, it doing it the sec how's it doing it the second time around, years later, knowing the knowing what you know now? What was that like? Oh, doing it bad? Oh, God. Oh, God. Are you kidding? <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, I knew how bad I was. Yeah. I mean, I arrived from, uh, I, I, we were all partying. I flew in from Chicago. Oh, my to audition so and I told the bunnies all the bunnies <laughs> and we were all so drunk I said listen uh, uh, Claudia you've got to pack for me I'm too drunk to pack someone suggested to be the name of your book I am too, too drunk, drunk to, to pack, pack. That is, that's, a good, that's a good name for a book yes. so, so I said uh, Claudia uh, pack sweaters and slacks, because if I okay. get in, I'm going to be a student. Don't pack feather boas, evening gowns, oh, and, you yes, know, yes, and negligees. Yes. So <laughs> I arrive in, in England with 
400 feather boas, evening gowns, <laughs> uh, you know, jewelry, negligees, and one sweater and one pair of pants. Oh, my God. That's it. I froze my ass off in England. Oh and, and uh, you know, I had nothing to wear. Oh, that's hilarious. So, and then, so when I arrived at the door of the academy, someone said, why do you have your script? I said, well, I'm auditioning for the Royal Academy. I said, well, you all are, but you're supposed to know it. I said, I'm supposed to know this? <laughs> He said, yeah. I said, oh, shit. <laughs> so I said, so I, they called me down. I was B. I was the first one. I said, oh, no. Oh, so I went down. I was so, I'm hyperventilating. I was just awful. Yeah. I, and so they said, this is uh, Sir Michael Redgrave and Dame Edith. Oh, I'd goodness. never heard of them. I said, oh, hi. You know, <laughs> I didn't know anybody was. You know, I mean, I, I just was a hot mess. I was a hot mess. But wait, wait. So, the, so the, why did they take you in? They said, well, she's got a good voice. Oh, and okay. she's got stage presence. We'll probably throw her out in the first term, and so I lasted. Oh. But um, I learned to speak English. I mean, when I'm from Chicago, right? Yes. And the teachers used to be so evil. <laughs> the teachers would say, "All right, class, I want you to hear. Most Americans can't say certain vowel sounds, and my name used to be Joan. Okay. So she said, Joan. I say yes, because I didn't like her. <laughs> I said yes with attitude. Yes, and she would say. Say the lawyer's daughter. Oh, God. I say, I love... the lawyer's daughter. <laughs> Did you hear that, Cross? They can't hear that. I said, <laughs> so she said, all right now, Joan, say the long road. I said, the long road. See, they can't have that either. No. I mean, and I hated her. I hated her. So I went and I studied with the most famous teacher who eventually, you know, worked with Olivier's uh, when he opened the National Theater. Yeah. I, I spent the summer learning how to say the lawyer's daughter and the long road. Wow. And when I got back to school, I was talking in like pure English. You know. Wow. So my, I did a lot of Broadway plays and most of them were British. Wow. Yeah. That is it. It's like, you know, I mean, my mom is from New York, and so when she came out of California, kept saying she was a teenager, your mother always sounded so exotic. Yes, you would say things like door and, and dog, and all you say was just an accent, like, you know, and, and of course, as you know, in New York, Brooklyn has their accent than Manhattan, and Bronx has their accent than Queens, but in California, they didn't know any of that. Yeah. It's all just New York to them. And so there's certain words to this day she can't say. She can't, yeah, she it's She can't hard. say drawer, or she said, or jury. She drawer. said drawer. Yeah, exactly, right. It's like certain, yeah. certain oh, words. Oh, sure. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I played a part once when I had to talk like that, and I started talking like that, and it was so easy to talk that way that I started really getting bad, you know. My, and my husband said, no, no, Jennifer, you got to stop it because you're talking like that all the time, you know. So, yeah, because it's very easy to talk. It's yeah. a very easy accent. Yeah. yeah. And so my mother, when she goes back to New York to visit and comes back, it's like, was that water, water? Or are you saying water? Like, what do you say, quarter? It's like certain water. words. I, was, I started, we were, one day we almost crashed the car laughing because she couldn't say brewery. Brewery. <laughs> She was saying it, but like in New York, I mean, she couldn't. I mean, it's like it just—it just made me. It was like, exactly. oh my god, it just—it was hilarious. I could talk to you forever. Oh, me too. You. You are just a delight. You Thank are a delight, you. and you. I'm very excited for Anacostia, which is coming out December 26th, season five. She is in it, and she's in it, and you're going to see her do what she does best, which is the, the drama that you know how to do so well. Thank you. Well, I'm so happy for you. Where can they find? Well, she's in Jennifer. She's Jennifer Bassey one on Twitter. You say you have a website too? What's your website? I. I think it's just Jennifer Bassey. There you go. Dot com or something. Just go ahead. Right? Dot com. Yeah, no. Jennifer Bassey dot com. And look around. There's two S's in Bassey. Now like listen, Shirley Bassey. Have a wonderful new year. Same to you too. Same yeah. to you too. Twenty eighteen is gonna be good, good be good for us, isn't it? What? It's gonna be good for us. Twenty eighteen. Yeah, it's gonna be, be brilliant. It's gonna be really brilliant for us. <laughs> I'm James Live Jr. Thanks to everybody in the chat room what? who is watching. I can't hear you. Oh, oh yeah, the cabaret, cabaret show. When, when is that start? When is that starting? Uh, well, Marilyn May is directing me. If you can't, if you've never heard her, Google her because she's brilliant. She's amazing. And she's eighty nine. Yeah. And we are going to. She probably open at fifty four below. She she wants it in October. But we haven't set a date yet. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, in New York. so when I come to New York, I have to see your, yeah, see your show. Exactly. I, see your show. I go to New York all the time. See my family. Okay. James Live Jr. You can follow me everywhere at James Live Jr. Uh, we are on uh, iTunes. We're on Speaker. No, sorry. We're on iTunes, on SoundCloud. We're on YouTube uh, under GH. Uh, you know, Spotlights, GH. This is all under GH. Her name's in the title, Jennifer Bassey. You'll be able to find this. Follow our page. Uh, GH Media Spotlights will go on there. And this interview will be on there. Also, share with everybody who needs to see her. Any, you know, YMC, you know, YMC, uh, YMC, AMC fans. <laughs> General Hospital fans and Acostia fans, pass this out. Show this to everybody. She's great. She's fabulous. And we'll see you in next year. It's my last show of the That's year. Right. So we'll see you next year. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas, everybody. 
from executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. The views expressed herein are those of the host only. Do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 